Welcome to Plymouth Memorial Hall and the official Cage Titans 51 Free Show. I am your host, Igdalia Medina, joined by Cage Titans Hall of Famer, Johnny Cupcakes. Thank you, Igdalia. Uh, yes, tonight we have some very exciting matchups. Some debuting fighters at the bottom of the card and some of our experienced veteran fighters at the top. Kicking off the action tonight, we are starting in the kickboxing Muay Thai ranks as decorated striker Mike Albert pulls on the big gloves for the first time when he takes on, by short no notice replacement, Avery Andrews. Super exciting matchup. I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, us kicking off with a Muay Thai fight, especially with these two uh, very athletic gentlemen. Andrews looks very fit and very, very strong going into this matchup. His physicality is super impressive. I think he has eight abdominal muscles, which is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and, he's, and he's rocking it quite well. And then uh, Albert, super experienced and just very tricky, um, very crafty fighter. He unleashes a ton of different types of techniques. So very excited for that matchup. Yeah, me too. Um, both of them are actually, not only are they physically fit, but they're mentally prepared for this fight, which is another big thing that people kind of neglect uh, for fighters is that they're mentally prepared for it. And I saw them yesterday and they are ready. Yeah, Albert is such a, a great, character he has uh, he was wearing a dare shirt yesterday uh, to keep kids off of drugs he just has uh, he's a true martial artist and uh, it's always a treat to see him uh, go to work inside the cage and the ring yeah we have um, some other great fighters that are going to be happening which is uh, McDonald and Timberlake Yeah, super excited for this fight. Uh, McDonald being one of my uh, personal training partners, I know quite a bit about Chris. He's had uh, a couple of fights inside the Cage Titans cage already. Man, uh, he's going against uh, a very tough, gritty individual in Telemik. So, um, yeah, it, I, it's going to be extremely interesting to see how these two um, approach the fight. Uh, it's going to be very interesting first uh, little bit, first minute or so. It could be very, uh, could be very heated right off the bat. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited for this one as well. We also have um, Costello and Tucker. Yeah, well, another guy, um, Costello out of South Shore Sport Fighting um, and fighting another fellow from that same gym, Go USFC, um, from out, out of New York. We're a very, very tough school. They take fights on short notice. They uh, come in um, uh, rolling deep with their team uh, all together as a, as a pack. They really almost have uh, like a cult mentality with their team. They're very, very um, close-knit and, and and uh, tight so um, yeah it's very interesting to see them come in and be fighting so many of the uh, the local guys here um, what do you think like having a that local advantage that crowd in the background rooting for you how much do you think that that is going to play into those fights I think it does play um, a big part because it depending on how focused they are and how their mental um, state is like it, it gives them that um, that drive to keep going and, and keep pushing forward because a lot of um you know sometimes when you come from from far uh, you have another fighter who's coming from new york they don't have that they don't have the support that we have when we see our local fighters fighting so that does have that does play a very important part in these fighters like when joe penafial originally came in against pat gilbride and everyone was booing at him yeah. and everything like that um it's, it's such an interesting thing and now joe has won over the crowd yep. and he's like a hometown guy it's um it's wild how some people are able to do that so we'll see if those guys from new york are able to kind of uh get under the skin of the uh of the locals here and maybe uh gain some fans of their own yeah, just like another great fight that we're going to be having is Danny Wahlberg and Phil. I don't know how you pronounce yeah, Lo Signo. Yeah. Lo Signo. Right. Um, yeah, he had his last fight um, on Cage Titans 50, and now he's back and he's ready to take take control and, and get that win. And he looks fantastic, Phil. Uh, just, I mean, even for a, a fighter, all fighters are in great shape, but Phil looks like he is on a different level as far as fitness. I mean, he's probably at 1% body fat. You can see every single muscle in his body. You can just tell that he's living the life of a fighter right now. And Danny Wahlberg coming from US MMA, you know that he's 
training with killers at US MMA. Um, so that fight could really be one of those fight of the night type of um, sleeper fights where people might not even recognize how great this fight is. 0-1 versus 0-0. Oh oh. You might think, oh, it's not great, but and this is going to be incredible. I guarantee that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to look at the school they come from Yeah. because um, all these fighters are training really hard. And even though this is um, his debut for Danny Wahlberg, when he was here and yesterday, he was definitely showing how you know focused he was and how determined he was to get that win. And mm -hmm. it was just like, no, go, 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 go. Like, he, he's ready for it. And he looked really good, too. Big fellow. Yeah. Um, Phil is a, quite a bit shorter. I'd say several inches shorter than Danny. So Danny will be... Um, having some sort of reach advantage, I almost guarantee, but Lasigno is just, um, I'm blanking on who he fought at last cage Titans, but it was a banger to say the least. They just went out there and laid it on the line. So I know that we'll see something similar from him, guaranteed. Yeah. You know, um, we also have another amazing fight um, with Brandon Demora and Carlos Vespasiano. Yes. Two people coming from two different, obviously different gyms that are dedicated to make these fighters. You know what I mean? They work hard, they train hard, they have the, the backing from their coaches. Some of the best coaches really uh, in the area, both uh, the team Solis with Chris, um, UFC fighter uh, coming from, you know, he, he was learning from uh, under a former UFC mm -hmm. fighter um, uh, at with um, uh, at um, where was he in man in um, where was Chris training out of originally? And he was with the rack. He was with BST. Yep, yep, and um, yeah, Jorge Rivera. Jorge Rivera. Thank you so much. From the UFC. Yeah, yeah, just I mean, he's had so many phenomenal coaches behind him, and then with local Lobo, he came up with teams like Junico and City of Tong, Black Belt. So we have these two f fantastic squads that are kind of have been birthed from other fantastic teams, yeah. and now they're producing these high-level fighters. These, uh, these two, Brandon Namora and Carlos, we were talking about it beforehand. Yes. Definitely fight of the night potential here. Yes. Without a doubt. Yep. Um, Demora is just such a stud, so young and, and uh, hungry and just uh, a f fantastic fighter, so talented. And uh, Vespasiano is just a gritty, tough fighter. I think he's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu and he comes to win fights. So uh, super excited for that fight. Yeah, I mean, if you look at them, if you've never seen either one of them fight, you may wonder, you might question it because you don't understand, like, that's their style. They're in their zone. They're very focused. They know what they want. They're, they're going to go get it. Um, so they're not really too focused on what's going on around them. They're more focused on their game plan, what they've been training for their camp, and ready to execute it. And that comes from having such great coaching because mm -hmm. that, that is really a mindset that not many people have. So to, to have such great uh, backing and coaching, that helps you stay focused and keeps you on the task. It's very easy to get, you know, you go out there as an amateur, you look around, there's ring girls, there's a thousand people in the mm -hmm. audience. In Cage Titans, we have cameras and lights and social media people are all over the place. So. Um, for them to just lock in and be fighting at the biggest promotion around is yeah. super impressive. And then to be on this card where, I mean, we, they could, winner here could be moving on to a title shot in the very near future. Most definitely. Sure. And this is um, the first fight of the year for Cage Titans. So, I mean, what a way to, to Bang, start yes, it off. Yeah. Right. Seriously. Seriously. And then moving on. With, uh, so, next up, we have two ladies that'll be mm -hmm. fighting. Yeah, we have Anna Crutchfield. I expect tomorrow night's fight to be super entertaining. I know that Erin Johnson is a game opponent, and she's going to bring it. I know she's very experienced on the ground, so uh, I expect there will be a little bit of wrestling, but I believe that I will finish the fight on the feet. So, uh, But after this, I expect to go. Um, I want to get as many amateur fights as I can this year, uh, MMA-wise. I have a ton of amateur experience when it comes to the striking kickboxing side. Um, so it has been a little bit more difficult finding amateur MMA fights. Um, so the goal this year is just to get as many amateur MMA fights as I can, as much cage time as I can, along with jiu-jitsu tournaments, and then hopefully be pro by the next year. And Evan Johnson. What's up? It's Boy Ruby. Uh, you're going to expect some absolute violence and chaos tonight. You definitely want to be there to see it. 
If you're not there, definitely tune into that live stream because uh, this might be a fight of the night. Uh, after I get this dub, I'm definitely going to try to uh, make this a career. Uh, get into the UFC and you can bet on that. Two great female fighters that have a great backing as far as combat sports training. I mean, we have Anna who has over a hundred boxing and kickboxing matches in her amateur career. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, That's I, like, off a first round knockout. And you would never know, you would not know that necessarily looking at her. She just, it just seems like a lovely young lady mm -hmm. and she's just bashing people's brains in um, uh, for fun. So it's super impressive. But then you got War Baby, Erin mm -hmm. Johnson. Like, could you have a more fitting name, um, War Baby? She And she embraces it very yeah. much. You can tell when she goes in there, it is war for her and she just thrives in it. So um, we have electricity in this fight for mm -hmm. sure. So yeah. experience and hunger from both from both females uh but uh yeah it's hard to really call that could also be fight at night without a doubt so i feel like right here in this right yeah. in the middle of the card it's like three fights in a row if not more if not four fights that could be fight of the night so these yeah. people are going to be competing with not only an opponent in the cage but they're competing with each other probably for some virality maybe if they you know everybody wants a viral finish where you yeah. can dana white sees it just at the right time on instagram he might be calling up you know war baby or uh or demora who knows to be setting up some kind of big future contract so you know these uh, these are some incredible fights they are i mean these two female fighters um they have a great foundation we have you know as we said anna has her boxing she wrestled in high school um you have erin who is training at hard knocks for her muay thai with under jake manini which is another great yeah. coach coaches ufc fighters exactly and... so i mean we are really going to see a great fight um it could go all three rounds or it, you know could finish at any moment so we really really got to pay attention to see what's gonna happen. And then like you said, we look at their gym and you see mm -hmm. Aaron from Lozon MMA, who had, you know, we have other Lozon MMA, Andrew Valdina down the card, and then we have SPG Alabama for mm -hmm. Anna, and right down the card you see Arthur Mopofu also from SPG. So these, these are coming from top tier gyms who are producing killers. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled when these, uh, when these folks get in the cage. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and we, I mean, we have another great fight coming up, which is Mike Taylor from Rojo, and we have Jeff Joy from Local Local. With two, again, two fantastic fights. Like Mike Taylor, again, he looked huge at the weigh-ins. This is my weight class. I fight in this area, 135, 140, and Mike Taylor is a large guy for that weight. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm super excited to see him get after it, and Jeff Joy is just a killer. Uh, stone-faced killer he is yeah and they're both ready they are both ready to to put on a show and get that win yes and well again both of them uh, we you know we got Jeff Joy undefeated mm -hmm. um, with a win here you're looking at a you, you see people off to the UFC at 4-0 it happens so for him to be in this position this far down the card, 2-0, and potentially 3-0, and we could see a, a, a very exciting future for him. And then Mike Taylor, all he fights is killers. Yes. That's the only people it seems that he fights. And if he's able to turn some of these into wins against a Jeff Joy, you, before you know it, he could be another party. And yeah. he could be you know, spoiling it for the home guy and then making his way to the UFC as well. So we just have some high-level action yeah. happening today. We do, we have high-level action happening that's gonna be going down tonight. And one thing that we need to also notice is that their record doesn't reflect their skill set. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you were saying, Taylor fights killers, and mm -hmm. that's what we're going to see tonight. And Jeff Joy was an amateur title challenger yeah. or, or holder. If, yeah, holder. He won. So so he's yeah. had several more fights even than that 2-0. Yeah. So we know that their experience is. Exactly. So, so Cage Titans is just um, creating such an incredible environment of uh, of high level fighters and it's just with every event the amateurs are better and the pros are that much closer to the next level it's super impressive yeah I mean and it has to do with the balance not only is it about the fighters but it's about the promotion providing yes. the ability for these fighters to actually grow and True. and perform what they want because if they don't have the right support and mm -hmm. the right guidance to to actually um, feel the ability to succeed yep. that's going to be something that interferes with their mindset
facts. Yeah, you, know? you can't grow bigger than no. your cage or your uh, your tank or what have you. You know, yeah. so yeah, it's so super important, and that's what you know, guys like our producer over here, Brian Gearson, and the mm -hmm. media team. Exactly. You know, it's unbelievable support that, that Cage Titans gets to be able to grow and blossom like that. So we're, we're lucky to be here doing what we're doing. Yeah. You know, we also have another amazing amateur title fight that's going to be happening tonight with Arthur and Valdina. Yeah, so this will be our uh, main card starting with our oh, okay. title fight. Uh, with Mopofu and Valdina for the 135 pound amateur title. This is a... Oh, sure. sure. We're going to see some highlight reel weigh ins from some action from the weigh ins yesterday. We'll kick it off right now. Right, right, right. Okay. What do you think we should more detail or more like off script more or? Yeah, go off script. Talk about like other things, whatever you, whatever you, whatever comes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody bring me a mug. Yeah. Uh, for the future. I'm just gonna throw my mic down and be like, just throw a fit. I'm supposed to have a mug. This is ridiculous. Where's the mug? I'm out of here. Yeah, like, uh, we're back live. Oh, sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> what mug? That is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, really good job. Just try to, yeah. You know, I just realized the video was over there. I didn't they even, because my thing is still like trying to connect. And I'm like, wait a minute. We're good. Yeah, I'm on data, not Wi Fi. I think the Wi Fi stinks. And we'll talk about. You can this start it off. Yeah, talk about the that was Valdina. Okay, yeah, Valdina Mopofu. A little bit of um, tension at the way in. Some more maybe than would be expected. Valdina's a very confident individual, and Mopofu is very matter of fact. So um, we got a little bit of a clash of personalities. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, anybody you excited for this matchup? If for anything specific that might go down, or are you excited uh, just to see these two scrap? Or, or yeah, I'm excited to see these two. Um, just, I mean, we've seen Valdina fight, mm -hmm. and we've seen Arthur fight, um, and at the presser, you you saw like a completely different. We've seen um, a completely different side of both fighters. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because yes. normally you see them calm and... But for this reason, it, I don't know if it's just because there's the titles on the line. Could be. Mopova want to get his title back. Yes. You know, so I mean, there's a lot. Um, but he's, even though he, he showed a side of him that we normally don't see, he was still very focused and very on point on what he wanted to do and what he wants to get accomplished yep. for this fight. Most definitely. He feels very confident mm -hmm. in his squad and his team. I mean, yeah. uh, he introduced me to, to everyone, and he's, uh, yeah, he's extremely mm -hmm. comfortable and happy right now. And yeah. like you said, the mental part is so important that these fighters are in a good mental state for this fight. Valdina is as strong mentally, it appears, as anyone I've ever seen. Yes. He feels super confident that he is going to beat uh, Mopofu in a very uh, decisive fashion. But as we know, Mopofu is a very, very difficult person to fight. He is, mm -hmm. he is extremely technical um, and, and, and high fight IQ. If he needs to win the fight in a certain way, he will fight that way to win. And I feel that uh, we're going to really see who these gentlemen are and when they get in that cage against each other because it's such a great matchup. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't, I, how do you think it's gonna, this this is gonna play out? Do you think it's gonna end or is it gonna go all five rounds? Cause you know, these two have been focusing on their technique. They've been focusing on their style. They've seen each other fight before in the cage. Yep. So they've already seen kind of their weaknesses, how, you know, their, their strengths. Yep. Do you think, or what is it that you think is gonna happen between these two in this particular time? It's gonna be very, very fascinating, I think, because you, Valdina, who we've seen have very, very crisp striking mm -hmm. as of recently, we talked, he has a very strong base in wrestling. Yes. That, that being said, when uh, Arthur fought Daniel Pena, 
he utilized a very, very good clinch game and grinded that fight out and kind of took Daniel away from his strength. Mm -hmm. So this fight is going to be kind of a, a toss-up in a way. I think whoever starts to lead the fight will, will take it over uh, more and more as the fight goes on. Uh, but don't be surprised if it ends like that as well uh, because both gentlemen are very, very diverse mm -hmm. and unpredictable in a lot of ways. So um, what would you rather see? Would you rather see these two fight it out on the feet or would you like to see a grappling kind of technical battle? I would like each and each of them to use their both their strengths. Yeah, like yeah. not go by what the other person's doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you go in there with your game plan. This is my camp. This is what I've studied. But oh, but this one's doing this thing. Uh, if they keep their own game plan and they give it their all and yeah. just not move from it, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I want to see. I want to see them both standing, giving it their all, yep. and doing what they do best. Yep. Uh, yeah, we definitely we're going to because they're both just such professionals, really. Mm -hmm. They're both amateurs as of on this paper. They're amateurs, but in there, the way they carry themselves, uh, they are professionals. And I, that kind of harkens back to who, who's coaching them. They're both from such exactly. high-level programs that uh, it's not surprising that they would be mm -hmm. carrying themselves this way. So we could be very well seeing um, some of the best future professionals in the sport right here during that fight. So yeah. um, everybody keep your eyes uh, on that fight. Coming up, we have an interview with Arthur Mapoko. What I can expect for Saturday night is it's going to be a show, it's going to be wild, it's going to be crazy. I'm excited to be back home, fighting in front of my friends, my family. Like, I fucking love you guys, let's fucking go. This shit's going to be lit, let's go. And what to expect, and after this, um, I'm not sure. I'm going to just keep going with it. <laughs> Stay tuned for what's going to happen next. To be continued. What did you think about that interview where he was like, you know what, to be continued, I'm not going to give you all the information I have. I know. Well, that's he's very matter of fact. He's not going to play games or anything like that. He's just, uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is how much information I'm giving you and, you know, no more. So I really like that about Arthur. I think he is... Um, He's a good person, and I, you know, I really respect him very much. So I'm excited to see him back around here fighting uh, for his title, really, for his title. Yeah. You know, we also were able to talk with Andrew Lazina, and he gave us his input on what are we going to be expecting from him during this fight. Uh, very good. Hi, I'm Andrew Valdina. I'm fighting for the 135-pound title tomorrow night for Cage Titans. What you can expect to see in my fight, once again, it's a high-paced <clears throat> high paced fight from bell to bell um, like the last fight that I had against Randy Francis this next one is my hottest fight to date but I think that's how it should be you know what I mean like if you keep winning winning you want to keep climbing that ladder and each fight should be the next hot one especially in the amateur division so this next fight tomorrow night I'm going to be the first person to sleep off in Mapoku whether it's with a uh, right hand a right high kick a uh, fucking rear naked choke a guillotine he's going to sleep I promise you guys that it's going to be a banger and I can't wait um, after this fight, if all goes according to plan um, and I get the belt, I'd like to fight for the 145 pound belt right after, be the champ champ, um, or I'll defend it. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do next. Um, by the end of 2022, I'd like to be pro and just keep going for where I've been going from here too with the professional ranks, make it to the UFC, make it big time. So, did you see that? I mean, Baldina was on point and direct with what he wanted to get done for this fight. There's no joking around with Arthur. He wants it, and he's going to get it. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, Baldina is a killer. He seems yep. like he is very, very, very focused on what he wants to do. Um, yes, you know, some people waver a little bit, and they, you know, they maybe know what they want to do. Baldina knows exactly what he wants to do. He sees his goals like targets, and he's running himself into them. Um, and I, we, we see that when he fights. He, he looks so confident and calm in his last fight, and it seems like he's really, really understanding the power that he has in his hands. 
which isn't something that a lot of big or small guys rather have. The fact that he's at this weight class and able to put hands on people like that is very impressive. But it's another thing said to do that to like an Arthur. Arthur is so good and so tough. You're not going to hurt Arthur, I don't think. I, I, I don't think that I could hit him with a baseball bat right now. I don't think he would even budge. You know, the, he's just a rock. So uh, we're going to see a, a brutal fight in there, I guarantee it, because neither man is going to back down, right? Yeah. No, they're, they want it, and they are going to show us how bad they want it. Definitely. And Valdina, coming from Lausanne, has such a great backing. We, the crowd is going to be outstanding. And when that place gets rocking, the 1,500 feels like 10,000. So I guarantee that uh, that fight is going to just be electric for sure. Yeah, I mean, between that one, I mean, Arthur was from here. Exactly. And he went two years because yep. of the pandemic to make sure that he gets his training. Mm -hmm. So... We're also going to have a big crowd for Arthur here. Most definitely, most definitely. Hey guys, and we also have some words from the one and only Mike Polair. Guys, tonight, Cage Titans 51. What more can we ask for? We have it all. Upcoming amateurs, seasoned pros, guys trying to strive and break through to the UFC. At the top of the card, a guy who's seen the pinnacle of the sport. He's fought in the UFC, made it all the way to the finals of the Ultimate Fighter. Joe Giannetti he is back, the Cage Titans champion, putting his first title defense against Jacob Jaguar Bowen. This is probably his toughest test to date on the local scene, and he knows if he can get a win here, he's right back in contention to getting back to the UFC. A lot at stake, and I couldn't be more excited for this fight. But before that, in the co-main event, who is not talking about this fight in New England? It's the most talked about fight going on right now. The most hyped matchup. These guys have been going at each other for so long, since the last event actually. The party, Joe Penafiel, he took New England by storm in 2021. 3-0, Cage Titans fight of the year. He's in the running for the interim Cage Titans Bantamweight title. And standing in his way is Lionel Bougeon. Lionel had such a career resurgence in 2021. Breakout fighter in the year. This guy's been around since the early 2000s, training, fighting, and this is the year that everything just clicked for him. They're two hungry warriors trying to really show New England who the best bantamweight is, and I'm excited to wrap the uh, title around one of these guys' waist. But before we get to those pro titles, we got an amateur title up for grabs. Atha Mapofu looks to recapture that Bantamweight title that he lost pre-COVID. He's been training with a new camp, shopping up his skills, and standing in his way is Andrew Valdina. Since Arthur's left, Andrew Valdina has taken the spotlight of the Bantamweight division here at Cage Titans. A 2-0 record uh, in 2021, a knockout of the year candidate. He was a fighter of the year candidate. He had a fight of the year candidate. This guy did it all last year, and now he's poised to take himself to the next level. Uh, these are two hungry guys ready to go at it and, and crown themselves, not only the Cage Titans champion, but the best amateur bantamweight here in New England. I got nothing else for you. If you haven't got tickets, you're shit out of luck. This event has been sold out for over a week now. And for those sitting at home that's watching right now, if you want to go over and check out the live stream, cagetitansfc.com, the top right-hand corner, you click the box, it brings you right to the live stream, so you can catch all the action tonight. And of course, as always, make sure you follow us on all of our social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, all those, because we're going to have tons of unique content on each platform, giving you a behind-the-scenes look at what's going on here tonight. So feel like you're part of the show, even if you can't be at Sold Out Memorial. So go check it out, and uh, Cage Signs 51. Uh, we'll see you inside the cage. Just like Mike said, make sure to check out cagetitansfc.com at the top right and join the live event stream. That is the only way you're going to be able to enjoy these fights just as much as we're going to be doing it tonight. Now, with that, co-main event. Joe Pena Pien and... Lionel Bugs Young. Oh man, I'm a, I have no words. I have no words. I don't even know. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm 
I'm getting goosebumps right yeah. now, actually, just thinking about those two fighting. Um, I just love both guys. Yes. I love what they are, who they are. I love that Lionel, the veteran, who's just having this crazy resurgence, just beating the best guys. And then the way that Joe just came up to the East Coast and just snatched up the East Coast like it was nothing. That's just mm -hmm. unbelievable. Um, what are you most excited for, for for these two when they crash into each other? Wow, I mean, it's just interesting. Um, it's hard to really pick and say one thing over the other because they are two different, um, obviously fighters, two different styles. But one thing that they both have is that they're dedicated and determined to get what they want. I mean, you saw them at the presser. They were basically explaining what they were gonna be doing, how they were gonna be doing it. But at the end of the presser, you know, they were hugging and showing each other respect because they are fighters. You know, so obviously as a fighter, you you have that um, intensity with your opponent. But once you're off and it's over, you guys are well-respected people. So anything can go because, I mean, even Lionel was saying that he's been training um, harder, um, getting to the gym more, you know, and the party was doing the same exact thing. So, I mean, these two fighters know that in order to get that title, they have to fight the best. And right now, these are the two that are on top. Most definitely. And most definitely. And both of them are experienced gentlemen yes. in their 30s. And they're, they're adults who are fighting because they love it. They're mm -hmm. not necessarily these, like, young lions. They're they're doing it for a, kind of another reason. They're doing it because that is who they are. They're fighters. And age is not a thing to them. It's no. just a number. And they are just here to express themselves and to show everyone watching who the best is. And they are both the best right at this moment. Yes. So when they fight each other and we really get to see who they are and who which one is better tonight, because ultimately, you never really know. A fight is crazy, so yeah, exactly. you know, they, they could fight 10 times. It could go different every time. But tonight, we're going to find out who the best is. And it doesn't get better than this. And it's funny because it's like you have the party who won the award of which one? Which award did he win? Breakout or fight no, of Lionel the year? No, Lionel was breakout, breakout of the year. Okay. And we have Lionel, I mean, the party as fighter of the year and Lionel as the breakthrough of the year. Mm. I mean, so we have these two fighters that are really gonna throw it down to see, am I gonna continue to be the, break, um, the breakthrough or am I gonna be the fighter? Yep, every, that, when does that happen? You know, breakthrough fighter and fighter of the year are, you, you would think they'd be in different weight classes yeah. maybe, but the fact that, yeah, they were both able to rise to that level, they, it was probably a toss up. It was yeah. like, do we give Lionel fighter of the year? Or do we give Joe breakthrough? It could have gone to either of them. So the fact, though, that they were both award winners, uh, it was no surprise because they killed it last year. Killed they did. It. So for them to now be in there, and they've hyped it. Joe is just a fantastic hype man. He's he great at promoting. He probably should promote in the future. And then Lionel's just been in this game for so long. He does this all really good. He's not just a good fighter. He's a good talker. He's an intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. He knows what the people want. He, you know, he does the, um, he's got the mask that's terrifying and the music that's terrifying. He gets into this character um, that is so real and authentic. It's very fun to watch. So it's going to be wild. I don't even know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know we also had um, some great interviews with them. That's right. So what you can expect from this fight is going to be straight fireworks. I'm an I'm a artist inside that cage and I'm trying to paint a beautiful masterpiece. Uh, every fight is a little bit different, everything has a little bit of a different emotional attachment. Um, this fight there's a lot of emotion um, and I, I just really want to do a job that no one's ever done on Lionel. He talks a lot but I've told everyone it's going to be Thunder versus Lightning Saturday night February 5th and Thunder makes noise but Lightning strikes and I'm going to strike. I'm going to win, I'm going to be accurate, and uh, my timing, my power, my everything's going to be there. So just come watch Lionel fall. Uh, what am I going to be doing maybe after this fight? Um, after this fight, I feel like I'm going to be looking for, for bigger fish. But Cage Titans is my home. You'll be watching me here at cagetitansfc.com. 
for as long as they're around as for as long as the party is around. So I'm going to be here. I'll be fighting for my, Mr. Mike Poveri. Don't be, uh, don't be a stranger. Say hi to me. Uh, drop in the DMs if you want to support and get a t-shirt, but you're going to find me here. There is no UFC, there is no 1FC, no Bellator for me. Uh, I like to perform in front of thousands of people in New England, and uh, I'm going to continue to do so and provide awesome fights and stuff that people remember and go back Monday morning to work talking about. So yeah, no line of interview, but we'll see Joe and hear what he had to say. Exactly. So we'll just hear what Lionel had to say uh, as well, and luckily we got to. Yes, let's see it. Alright, I expect in this fight that I'm going to push the party to all types of limits. I'm going to give a lot of offense. I'm going to take him down when I choose. I'm going to be the aggressor. Um, and I don't see it going to full five rounds, but if he can make it, man, then he's a survivor. And after this fight, I'm trying to unify the 135 belt um, in New England. Um, I'm assuming by the time I'm done unifying it, I should clear my record, be at even 500, and then we'll see where we go from there. And just like that, Lionel told us exactly what's going to be happening how he expects to get this win, what his expectations are, and he's ready. He is ready. He, you know, I don't even know how to say it. He's just ready. I've seen fighters that are semi there, like they're, they've trained everything and they've done this and they've done that, but they haven't, they're not mentally completely there. And I mean, this is before the fight mm -hmm. because usually it takes some, up to like the, the night of the fight because you know you're still dealing with so many different obstacles up until then yep. personal mentally all of that but mm -hmm. there at the presser at weigh-ins he was on point and he you know worked hard definitely he's definitely in a like a everything happens for a reason type mm -hmm. of mentality he's just this is his moment i saw him at the presser also and at one point he kind of walked into that empty arena and I could just see him like living through the moment that he was about to have in a couple days and he, you could just tell that he it, this is like the UFC for him mm -hmm. this is the biggest event he is so focused and training so hard and he's had so many years of training and he really seems like he, he's kind of like understanding everything mm -hmm. in a way that he maybe did in it as, as a younger man so uh, and then you have Joe who's the same type of yeah. attitude they just everything is in the universe for a specific reason and he is just like a, this perfect part of this beautiful mechanism that's the universe and um, to see it two guys like that square off it's gonna be like looking right at God in a way you know yeah. because they're just so special these two and they're gonna fight each other. I just don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, right now we're looking at the calm before the storm because when they both walked in there yesterday, they were calm. You knew they had their little signs of aggression and you know, but they had a lot of respect. Just what happens before we get, we get hit with like a tornado and a hurricane, like everything's nice and calm. And you see that little, you know, sign that something's gonna be happening. That's exactly what's happening with these two. So tonight for the co-main event, it's gonna be on fire and like Joe says you know lightning what is it thunder yeah. you can hear thunder but lightning strikes twice and he is gonna be striking so this is not a fight you want to miss I mean if you need to go to the bathroom make sure that you go to the bathroom early because if you miss this you are gonna regret it you are definitely gonna regret this fight there are a lot of people that will be tuning in specifically for yes. that fight for sure and the fact that we have the pay-per-view and that people from Florida who are representing or uh, supporting Joe are able to tune in mm -hmm. for uh, you know a small fee we get to see these incredible fights um, yeah they, I, I urge people to go online and go to Cage Titans FC and get these fights on that pay-per-view because it's a special thing not every organization is able to set up this pay-per-view so the fact that the Cage Titans is doing it and the money the proceeds from that go to the fighters it's just it's win-win it's win-win yeah it is it's it's a win-win and when you see this fight you are definitely going to see who won and how it happens and why they are where they are in life remember both fighters have been fighting killers 
and because of it, that's who they are now. So definitely make sure to tune in, make sure to watch this fight. You know, we also have the main event. I know, we haven't even got there yet. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we have Jacob Bone and we have Joe Giannetti. Which is just uh, such a high level matchup. This could be on a, a UFC card, I think, probably, yeah. or Bellator, or you know, LFA, a high level uh, fight organization. So the fact that we have it here, uh, capping off Cage Titans 51 is just a special, special uh, moment. Jojo, a former training partner mm -hmm. of mine, he's just, everybody knows it's snatching nets and cashing checks. So he is here focused on getting this win, moving his career forward, and getting back into the mm -hmm. UFC ultimately. But it's going to be a, potentially a complicated task with a guy like Bone, who's just a veteran and very, very highly technical. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like trying to think. I mean, they're so, they're both high level that I feel like it's gonna go all five rounds. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, hopefully right. it doesn't get to that, but I feel like it will go all five rounds because of their skill set. Yeah, that's what happens when two high level people get in there and then uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to finish a, a, a fighter who is mm -hmm. incredibly equipped to deal with that type of uh, situation. So both gentlemen are, are capable of withstanding each other's output, mm -hmm. but it's just the smallest little mistake I think that could really um, be the difference. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be potentially who makes that first mistake yes. and nobody's perfect so we could definitely um, see a little slip or a little um, misstep or something so keep an eye out because it's with a high level of fight like that it's the tiny little details as you know that could yeah. change the outcome just like a golfer who's swinging a golf club the smallest little adjustment in the club will send the ball in a different place and with these two fighters the smallest little detail could really change the course yeah. of the fight so um, yeah eyes peeled and stay uh, stay watching. Yeah, I mean, they have the experience. Now it's just a matter of seeing them in the cage and seeing what they will show us tonight. G Jojo fought with uh, quite a bit of striking last time. Yeah. Do you think that maybe he'll go back to his uh, grappling ways or maybe he'll approach the fight from a more uh, striker standpoint? Uh, I feel like <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll be more of a stand-up guy. Yeah. And if the opportunity yeah. arises, then obviously he's going to go it. and take it. True. But he's changed so much, and, and you can see it physically, yep. mentally. Like, he, honestly, he seems like a brand new person. So before True. it was his ground technique, yep. but now he's been able to dominate both. Mm. And that is definitely something to be scared about because you don't know what he's going to come up with. Before, maybe yep. somebody can come up with a game plan because, hey, you know, he's really good at this. He's been doing this. But now you don't know what he's capable of. True. Very true. What about you? What do yeah, you think? I think just just like you said, nails on the head, I feel. He's just uh, going to take it as it comes. He's yep. such a relaxed guy in there. He's always had um, a very good confidence about him. But kind of like you said, he's really grown into almost like a new mm -hmm. Jojo where he is confident in his skin. He's confident in his skills. And he just wants to display those skills against the best people possible. And Bone is is the best person right now that he could be doing that yeah. against. Bone, who he, JoJo referenced, beat the former Cage Titans champion. So he really views Bone as the guy to beat. So mm -hmm. it is going to be great to see him strive for something. And then if he uh, is able to uh, be successful, it's going to be wonderful to see. It is. I think whatever um, pressure they they had mentally, they let it go, and now they are actually allowing all their skill set to just flow. Yep. And wow. that's why it's so important, you know what I mean, to have the right mindset, because once you get that, yep. everything just falls right into place. And that's what's gonna be happening tonight. Everything is gonna flow, and it's gonna fall into place, and as long as they stay focused, yep. they're gonna be good. Absolutely, and we're gonna be good, that's for sure. We're exactly. Be extremely lucky <laughs> to see all these fights happen. Yeah. Um, we're, we're very, very lucky that we have such a high level uh, promotion that we can be a, a part of, like Cage Titans. So, uh, cagetitanssc.com, right hand side, stream, Light get events. that pay per view. Mm -hmm. This fight with Joe is gonna be a good fight, tough fight. I only take tough fights. Um, it's just going to make me better, you know, more um, 
more opportunities from this fight. Um, there's, uh, you know, just keep growing, keep getting better, and uh, yeah, he's gonna throw things at me that I've maybe never seen. I'm throwing things at him that he's never seen. So, learning opportunities. Fight night, you guys can expect me to do my best. That's honestly just been my only goal uh, ever since I took that time off, just to train and improve. A couple of my fights, wins and losses, I just really didn't do my best. So Saturday night, I'm going to do my best. And I think that when that happens, I'm one of the best fighters in New England. And not many, if any, guys could beat me. So you're going to see the best Joe Gennetti, better than the last time. And after that, who knows? We've got a lot of options if I win. And we have a lot of, uh, if, I, if I lose, we got a lot of changes and stuff and improvements to make. You know, we always have improvements to make. So right now, do my best Saturday night and then we'll focus on improving and look at our options after that. Did you see those interviews? I mean, Joe Janetti, you can hear it in his voice how he is calm and he is focused. That aggression that he used to have before is not there, where now he is able to actually throw down and show everybody what's gonna happen tonight for the main event. When you're training with the best people around or in the on the planet even like he is out at AKA and things and he he really has come into that. I think he almost felt like he wasn't quite who he was supposed to be. Like he was supposed to be this UFC guy and uh, ultimate fighter finalist and when he went out and really started doing time with the AKA it mm -hmm. feels like he's really upgraded recently and it's like he feels like he's really coming in to uh, the fighter that he always knew that he was, but maybe um, he just needed that little bit of confidence that comes from training with some of the best guys. So um, yeah, it's super f awesome to see JoJo grow and, yeah. and whatnot because we have been watching him for so long. Yeah, I mean, jo uh, Jacob Bone also, you know, expressed how he wants to get into the cage and he wants to do, you know, perform and execute everything that he's been training for he drove in doing a snow first like as he's driving in mm -hmm. he's dealing with all this inclement weather where it's snowing and then it's raining and then it's <laughs> ice and then he gets here but that's what shows uh you know what a fighter is about because they have to deal with all these pressures they have to deal with all this stress right before they get to weigh in because and even weigh-ins it's also another situation that can happen that nobody expects yeah, and exactly. until they're done with that they can't yeah. and the bad Jacob coming and representing his own gym is very important yeah. I feel you know he has people that are under him that he trains that are looking up to him and um, it just means a lot I'm sure for him to be representing his own school um, and against some of the best fighters that there are Jojo highly ranked former uh, ultimate fighter mm -hmm. finalist and and former UFC fighter. So Jacob being able to display his skills against such a high level opponent, um, I'm sure he's extremely proud. Yeah. And he's gonna, you know, he'll do a phenomenal, fantastic job. This is gonna be a, uh, a an excellent fight. To just wonderful cap to a fantastic evening of fights, I think. Yeah. Yep. And with that, we will be enjoying Cage Titans 51 again. Make sure to sign up for the live event stream which will be cagetitansfc.com on the top right thank you so much everybody